Hello everyone, welcome to the week before spring break. Hello, welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Marily Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. We are currently on Monday, March 18th, 2024 and it is week 29 and like i mentioned the week before spring break students have a four-day school week this week starting with today ending on thursday friday is a teacher planning day and it's available for opt if you worked the first couple of days of the school year without pay which i did so it'll be my last opt day and we had a pretty good day i started with my block one my advanced group this morning they started with a quick write activity on how they feel lucky since yesterday was St. Patrick's Day and I'm wearing my lucky Hello Kitty shirt. And then they went into reading the anchor text for unit five weeks one and two, which we're a little bit behind. So they read that and then I put them into a group so that they can complete some graphic organizers on chronology. Here is that quick write activity that I gave my advanced group. So I feel lucky in many ways and they continue from there. They have space in the back in case they need it. I also made a scaffolded version for my ELL students, which haven't done it yet, but here it is. It is a closed paragraph or writing frame. And I did add this because I had space. And on the back, I gave them phrases and words to help them, you know, complete their writing. So that is a quick write activity that I made myself. And here is one of the chronology organizers. This group had to work on this page and they wrote the events that happen in order from that page. There were a total of five groups and pretty much all the groups finished. There's just a few that need to, you know, make some corrections, which I don't know if they'll have time tomorrow, but if they do, I'll give it to them. The reason why I said that is because tomorrow we're having a practice writing test. So that's why my room is set up for testing. I just set the desk up like this right now after school so that it's ready to go. Students will be practicing their writing test on the platform that looks just like the one they'll have the real day of testing, which will be two weeks from tomorrow. And yes, so I don't know if they'll have time to finish that graphic organizer tomorrow, but we'll see. When I had my block two, which is my ELL students this afternoon, they used the entire block time to finish their writing practice test on performance matters, and they submitted it at the end of the day. So that's it for today. I am going to get my things and leave, but we'll see because I have some things to take care of before I go, but I will see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, we're now at the end of the day Tuesday. Today was also the final day for our Minecraft club and as a little special treat to celebrate our last day together, I did buy the students some Domino's pizza. So here are some leftover boxes that I am taking home. I actually ordered one full pizza box for home because my son loves it and these are leftover ones in total i ordered six boxes three pepper no two pepperoni and four cheese so i had enough pepperoni to give to the kids and cheese of course so they each got two slices and the snacks that i always provide for them so that was great in the morning we had our mock writing test where the students the whole classroom like i showed you was set up in that classroom testing format but now i put all the desks back into groups so they're all wobbly so i'm going to fix it before i leave so it's ready for tomorrow so we spent the whole morning working on the practice test the students familiarizing themselves with the testing platform and all the tools that are available to them as they take the writing test online and of course they use their paper writing planning sheet then I had my block two this afternoon, my ELL students, and they needed some reminders on how to use the planning sheet from what my co-teacher was able to observe. So I dedicated pretty much the entire class time going over that planning sheet and how to use it. So here it is. And at first we wrote the APT. So I told them that's how we analyze the prompt or remind them. <clears throat> and we get the APT from the prompt itself. So here's the directions. So the audience, here's the A. The purpose is connected to the type of essay, the P. And the T is the task or topic. So since my A is an academic audience, we write academic. So I'm writing to my teacher. P is expository. So my purpose is to explain. 
And I also ended up writing this on the board as I was explaining it. So I let them know or reminded them. Expository means to explain. That's my purpose. Argumentative will be to give my opinion. Now I use the word opinion with my ELL students because I felt it was easier for them. With my advanced students, I say state my claim because my claim is my opinion, what I am claiming to be what I would choose. And then I had them write the task, which is connected here is usually after the word about. And what we did is I had read, um, I reread the sources with the students. So we read source one, and then I showed them how to take quick short notes related to information that will help me answer this. The same with source two and source three, which again here, source one, and source one finishes up here, here's source two, and on the back is source three. So then after that, I took them to the back of the planning sheet and I told them, this is one way you can plan. You have the topic and then how do people express themselves or use the arts to express themselves? I had the students give me some ideas. So some of them said express their feelings, others said connect with others. And of course, I showed them an example of the essay, a short, quick, simple example for them that answered this topic in a different way. So here is that sample i wrote it quickly on the board as you can see it's very simple because again my ESOL students are level ones and twos which means they're starting to learn english so i told them your introduction you're restating that topic that you get from the prompt first body paragraph is answering that or explaining that so i use painting and then you support it with evidence and then your elaboration so for them i'm trying to show them the first body paragraph to begin with and then give them either the idea or the reason. And then in source one, the author says, find evidence to support that. And then this means that so that they elaborate. And then here's body paragraph two. Let's move on to, that's the other one I'm showing them. And this one I focused on dance. In source two, the author says, and then I showed the evidence. This means that, and then I elaborate. I told them that if they wanted to add more, they could, but this is ba the basic that I want them to work on. Then when they get to the conclusion, in conclusion, comma, and they repeat their central idea, in this case, in this expository, people use the arts to express themselves like painting and dancing. So that is a quick, simple example that I'm trying to review with my ELL students. So that is what we worked on today. It was a lot of writing, a lot of review. Tomorrow, I'm not going to be here. I will be going to my orthopedic doctor to check up on my arm. And I have left subplans on my desk. So here are the subplans explaining our schedule and the activities that students are going to be doing. And here are the assignments for block one, all labeled. They have a writing practice test that they're going to work on. The same for block two. And this little selection test on the main selection, a drop of water. So that's all for today, Tuesday. I won't check in with you again until Thursday to wrap up this short week. Hello, everyone. We have made it to the end of the day, Thursday, March. What is it today? The 21st, I think it was. I already changed my dates. Uh, yes, March 21st. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't here yesterday, Wednesday, because like I mentioned, I went to my orthopedic doctor. Good news, uh, x-rays look good. He thinks that it's inflammation in my arm, so he just prescribed some anti-inflammatory medication so it could hopefully help. Um, so that's great. And today, Thursday, I came back to school and finished off the week, and it's officially spring break. I mean, spring break can literally start as soon as I leave school, which will happen after I finish this clip. So this morning I started with my block two, my ELL learners, and they started by working on Imagine Learning and I ready on the computers. We did that and then we worked on our reading test. My block two also worked on the reading test, their version on the computer on performance matters. And after we were done with the reading test, we had recess. So let me show you the reading test as that's what we were working on. This is the scaffolded test that my ELO learners get. So they only have the first passage, which was on Mary Anning. As a reminder, this unit went over chronology text structure, as well as antonyms as our context clue for identifying 
the meaning of words. So this is, like I said, the scaffold. So it has a lot of pictures and visuals and scaffolds to help the students access the information in the text. So we went through the text and this is the photo and the caption that the students also needed to answer questions on. That was the other skill that we were going over, text features, photos, and captions. So we read about Mary Anning, really cool um, biography of her, and then the students answered some questions. As you can see, the questions are also scaffolded and options are eliminated, so they don't have to choose out of four in this case for this question. For each of these details, they have to choose out of three. And they also have like little mini anchor texts and stuff, anchor charts, I should say. So here's another question. They needed to choose two ways that the author uses chronology. And we had a vocabulary question on a formal, what formal schooling means, the antonym of that. And the part B was the clue. And then we had another question on antonyms for unstable, the antonym of unstable. And again, part B for the clue. And then students had a question on the photo, what we can learn, uh, or the help, what can the photo help us visualize. And then for number six, they needed to answer a question based on the caption. Now, my advanced group had this test on the computer. It looks a little bit different, but basically it's the same text. So this is a Mary Anning text without all those scaffolds. So the students had to read the text and answer those same questions, but without the scaffolds and the elimination of choices. And then the students had a second text that they needed to read. Let me just get there quickly, which is on the painting, which was a really cool text. So it had figurative language, which is the second standard that the students were being assessed on. So they read this passage called the painting, and then they answer questions on figurative language. They answered a question on antonyms. And again, on the purpose of each of these examples of figurative language. And again, antonyms, and that was it. That was number 10. Each test has 10 questions. So that is the bulk of what we did today. I really wanted to make sure the students got those assessments done so that when we come back from spring break, we can go ahead and start a new unit after we're done with the state writing test, which brings me to the other thing I was just working on before I leave, which I updated my Writer's Craft Google Slides writing review that I made years ago. So I revised it for the new test that we're taking and this is what it looks like. So this is my Google Slides on Writer's Craft. It looks like a game, but it, I promise it's not a game. It is just a really cool Google Slides presentation that I created. So it goes over, and I made it Minecraft theme, obviously. <laughs> Years ago, I made it Minecraft theme because I thought it was fun. This year, it kind of goes with my classroom theme, or it does go with my classroom theme. So we go over what the challenge is, which is understanding the writing prompt. And then I give them different examples of analyzing different prompts so that they can see how to find the essay keyword and the topic that they're writing to, which is the, uh, finding the APT, the audience purpose and the task. And this is a writing prompt that I'm giving them as an example. And then that is the first phase, which is the challenge you know, stage, understanding the challenge. Then we go into resource gathering and going over exploring the resources or the sources i should say gathering the evidence and crafting a writing plan so then i show them some examples of my eclipse passage set which i sell on tbt uh, talking about the two types of eclipses a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse and then what to do on the front side of the planning sheet and on the back so that was that stage and then it's the final boss stage, which is like fighting the Ender Dragon, which is to write your essay. So the introduction, the body paragraphs and conclusion and some essay reminders that I included here, along with some of the things that I created, my mini anchor charts that I've created for writing this year. Uh, so that I included here. And I also included some introduction examples for that Eclipse 
essay. Oh, I just noticed I need to change that from informative to expository. We'll do that. Okay, so here are some more introduction examples, body paragraph examples, and a conclusion examples, and then some essay reminders to remind them to revise and edit along with the scoring rubric. And that is the end of that presentation. And at the end, end of the presentation, as you can see, all three stages are grayed out for completion of the writing review. So that's all that I have for today and for this week 29, week before spring break. Uh, I can't wait to relax for a whole week. I'm so excited. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought, any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day, and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.